Hello and welcome to Beginning Illustrator. My name is Laura Coyle and I'll be your instructor for this series. I use Illustrator every day in my own work and I'd like to introduce you to this very powerful tool for creating your own graphics. In this class I'll introduce you to many of the tools in Adobe Illustrator and I'll be teaching you techniques that you'll be able to use right away for creating your own elements for design, whether you're creating designs for products, blogging, scrapbooking, or crafting. And we'll also cover typography in Illustrator, along with some basic techniques for editing existing vector art. But before we get into the methods, I'd like to show you some of the basic concepts behind the program because people are often curious about what it is exactly that you can accomplish in Illustrator in comparison to Photoshop. The most basic distinction between these two image editing and creation programs, as you may already know, is that Photoshop is used for manipulating pixels, while Illustrator is a vector-based program. And vector is, of course, the technical term for it, but what does that mean to us as artists and designers? Well, you know if you zoom in on a photograph or an image in Photoshop, you eventually get to the point where you can see the pixels the individual boxes of color that make up the image. Each pixel has just one color in it, and you have thousands upon thousands of pixels that make up your image in Photoshop. From a distance, though, the image appears to be made up of continuous tones. That's why we care about what resolution our photograph is. Is it fine enough so I'll see only the crisp, smooth tones when it's printed or displayed, or will I see those jaggedy pixels? Now Photoshop is definitely the right program for manipulating photos and painterly artwork with lots of tones, textures, and colors in it. But if we look at something more graphic in Photoshop, even typography, we can see where Illustrator is the more useful and efficient program. I'm zooming in on one of my illustrations here in Photoshop. This is the Cupcake Lady. And you see the pixels, the jagged edge here, and it's really noticeable around the type. Now I'm going to move over to Illustrator and zoom in on the same image and you'll see crisp lines and shapes no matter how close you get. And you can see the type is smooth also. You can keep zooming in and you can go all the way to the sprinkles on the top of this cupcake and you'll only see crisp edges. And that's because this is vector art. There are no pixels here. So in Illustrator, and this is one of the most important concepts to understand, we don't need to be concerned about resolution like we are in Photoshop. Just as I've zoomed in on this cupcake as far as I can go, and I see only smoothness, no jaggedy pixels, I could literally print this cupcake on the side of a bus and it would be just as smooth. That's because Illustrator images are made up of objects, and each object is an outline shape consisting of points, called anchor points, and lines, called paths, that connect the anchor points. So you can see, the top of this cupcake is an object. It's a shape, kind of a half football shape, and it has these two anchor points, and then lines connecting the anchor points that make up the shape. Same with each individual sprinkle. Each one is a shape, or object, made up of points and lines. And I can move these points and lines around if I want to. So when we draw these objects and then decide we want to enlarge them, like this, to make a giant cupcake, Illustrator does the mathematical calculations to scale the distances between those points and lines, no matter how large or small you make them. And that's why Illustrator art is infinitely scalable. It doesn't depend on resolution or DPI like Photoshop files do. And Illustrator files are generally smaller in size than Photoshop files, and by size, I'm referring to k-size or megabytes. Remember, a Photoshop file has to contend with information for every single pixel, even if they're all the same color. And Illustrator's information is basically broken down into plotting points and lines. So the file sizes are generally smaller. They require less processing power from the computer, and they take up less room on your hard drive. Now let's go back into Illustrator and I'd like to give you a closer look at vector graphics. So let's look at these simple shapes and paths I've drawn. If I select the rectangle, you can see the anchor points, one in each corner, and the paths that connect them. Same for this ellipse shape here. 
There are anchor points and curved paths between them. These shapes are also known as closed paths, meaning you can fill in the shape with a color like this. I'm going to choose a green to fill my rectangle. And then I'll select the ellipse here and fill it with another solid green color. And Illustrator has fills that are even more complex. Gradient fills, transparent fills, and even patterns. But for now, we'll stick with solid color. I can also change the outline of this shape. In Illustrator, this is called the stroke. And I can make it a heavier weight stroke. I can change the color of the stroke. And I can even make it disappear, so that even though it's still a shape, we can't see the stroke around it. So, those are the two basic properties of any path we draw, the fill and the stroke. The paths I've drawn here are known as open paths. They're open-ended line segments, and so you can't really fill them. You can try with a curve like this, and Illustrator attempts to fill this in as if it were a shape. But it doesn't really work because it's an open path. We can alter the stroke, change its weight, we can change the color of the stroke, and we can even make it a dashed line. Next, let's take a look at three basic ways of drawing in this program, just to give you an overview. And we'll be looking at these tools in depth in this class. First, we have the shape tools, a rectangle tool and an ellipse tool, and there are other shapes. And we'll use these a lot in this class because there's so much you can do just by drawing with shapes and then combining them, editing them, and changing their properties. Next are line segments here that I drew with Illustrator's pen tool. The pen tool doesn't work like any drawing tool you've ever used before, but nevertheless, it's an essential Illustrator tool, and it allows you to plot out anchor points, and straight line segments are generated automatically between the points. You can also draw curved paths between anchor points with the pen tool by pulling out these Bezier curve handles. And this is a skill that takes some patience to master, but we'll take our time getting to know the pen tool in this class. Lastly, Illustrator has some more intuitive drawing tools, and they work really naturally when you're using a pen device like a Wacom tablet. This looping line here is one I drew freehand using the pencil tool, and Illustrator has even more freehand drawing tools, like the paintbrush tool, and we'll be checking those out in this class as well. So, I hope this overview has been an informative preview of Illustrator. It's a very deep program, and there are many tools and many functions, and everyone has their own way of working with the program. I'm learning new things all the time, and over the years, this software has really had a major influence on my illustration style. So I'm going to take you through some techniques in the coming lessons, so you'll really get engaged with Illustrator, and you'll be creating design elements that you can use right away. And by doing that, you'll have a great foundation for making your own designs in Illustrator. So, meet me in the next lesson, and we'll get started.